Hi, I'm Luke, and this is my StableBot. It's been about a year in development, and it's based off of E3D's Tool Changer template. I think it's a great machine, but tool changing has a couple little quality of life improvements that I think could really be useful. One of them is calibrating those pesky tool offsets. So every one of these tools, whether on the machine or something that you want to swap on, needs to have an offset so that all the tools print and align correctly between the different filaments and materials that you're adding, or if you're using a subtractive head like the Assemble, to take them off. If they're not aligned, things will happen that you don't want from just having a poor looking print all the way to having too much film into one spot, having a nozzle catch and smacking the whole head off. All of these things are unavoidable. So tool offset calibration is actually something that's you know pretty important. E3D solution is to use vernier calipers where you print out a set of measurements, you measure between them and then you use those to calculate the offsets and then enter them in and then print them again. That's a lot of steps. It takes a lot of time and it, it's tedious if you wanted to add a new tool or change something around or, or are prototyping. It's not exactly the, the fastest way. Um, a different solution is to use a touch plate where you have a tightly controlled circle that's you know laser cut or machined into a plate and you use uh, electrical conductivity to touch around and to find that center point of that nozzle. This has a couple downsides of its own where you have to have a tightly controlled circle so that if your nozzle touches in a place that you weren't necessarily expecting because you're, you're finding the offsets, you don't know where they are. Um, if that surface is uneven, you could have different offsets because of these inaccuracies. So for hobbyists and for people who want a consistent, always on tool that doesn't require a lot of fancy wiring or other considerations, TAMV seems to be the best solution. What is TAMV? TAMV stands for Tool Alignment Machine Vision. It uses a webcam and OpenCV2 to find the orifice of the nozzle, the spot that the filament comes out or the cutting edge of your tool. And it uses some fancy math to find the center point and uses that to enter it in for your tool offsets. It's a simple automated way that just requires you setting up your printer initially for tool changing. And from there you can, with a few simple commands, you can get all of your tool offsets and, and go away printing. By using this, I've, I'm able to change a tool within five minutes and get it fully running. So let's get started. What do I need to run TAMV? Well, first off, you need a Do-It machine. Currently, it is written only for Do-It machines. In the future, this will be expanded to other machines, uh, most notably Clipper. But uh, as of right now, the, the calls that it makes are to specifically Do-It Web API, which is another small little interface written by Denal, which responds over HTTP. What that means is you can run this on either a Do It 2 or a Do It 3. You do not need the Do It 3 with the SVC implementation. You can actually just have a separate Pi or other machine running in the distance. Um, second, you need that you know other machine. So you need either a Pi or a full feature computer. You know whatever choice you have. Um, the easiest is probably going to be a Pi. They're pretty cheap, pretty simple, and um, the modern Do It 3s and backporting down to Do It 2s can run with those SPCs directly interfaced. So that's exactly what the setup here is doing. Um, a direct uh, Pi 4 that's uh, plugged in via SPI using the included cable. Um, third, you'll need a webcam. Uh, some sort of camera, either a webcam, I'm using a stripped down C270, or a USB microscope um, and in, in a safe spot. And then the fourth, you know, recommended but not absolutely necessary is an LED ring. So as you can see over there, um, I do have a ring of NeoPixels that allows me to control the brightness, color, and um, which pins are turned on or off if I need to tweak the lighting. Um, ideally, you won't need to uh, since it typically just strips it down to a black and white image. but um, I like the option. Now, ideally, I do want to mention that those LEDs should be diffused, so I should have some sort of translucent layer over them that spreads out the light to make it so that it doesn't reflect as hard. Um, I currently do not, which is kind of one of the reasons why they're so bright, but um, in the future, I will be having a fully encapsulated mount that will be, um, that should spread out the light to make this even better than it is now. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and have TAMV installed, but I'll be linking in the description below how to install it, how to, and there should be an install script that takes care of most of it for you. So you should just have to follow the instructions and the programs will auto install themselves. Next, we'll go to run it. So to run it, you need either a touchscreen like I have here, again, uh, since I'm running all 
through the, the Pi um, that's interfacing directly with my Duet 3 6HC. Um, I have all this set up nice and easy, but you can just have a headless Pi running off and then interface with it through VNC, but it has to be a graphical user interface. You cannot um, do this via just command line. You have to be able to actually see the nozzle uh, either from OpenCV or um, whatever other requirements. I have not personally tested X11 through SSH, so go ahead, test it out. Let me know in the comments below. Appreciate that. All right, so now we're in the TAMV directory. I have already have everything installed, so we should be good to go, but you're gonna wanna run um, the TAMV.py command, and then it will launch the program. So what we're gonna need to do is navigate the, um, the control point. So I'm doing this via my phone, via just regular DWC. You don't need to do anything in the program. And as you can see, it actually changed when the carriage started to go over um, the top there. So we're gonna keep moving it until we find our control point. Now, I personally prefer using the, um, the Z Pro. And since I have an E3D tool changer head mounted on my machine here, um, that is part of the carriage. Uh, for others, it may be a BL touch or an inductive probe, but I prefer to use the probe as a zero, zero point. That way, all tools are starting from that zero, zero point instead of having something like a tool one be the root, right? But the, I can replace my tool one with something else and then the rest of the offsets will be kind of goofy since they're all based off of that tool one. This way, if I replace one tool or for whatever reason, I don't have to readjust based off of the first tool. I adjust based off of the as installed machine, the, the thing that shouldn't be changing overall. Basically, we just want to slowly navigate it over. If you are able to get your um, switch installed in a position that it works perfectly every time, and that um, like a like a servo like I have here, um, you know that's that's ideal, right? Um, to not have to find it every time. And afterwards, you can actually use the command uh, dash CP and the XY coordinates of your camera relative to your control point and it will you won't have to do this first step it'll actually just start picking up tools and start running through it but anyways as you can see here um, the probe is actually centered right in the middle of that green circle and then there's a smaller red circle on the inner part and so we're good to go so we'll go back over to the console and follow the instructions all right now we hit Control c and it'll go pick up the first tool so what's important to note is that if you have a tool changer like this it needs to go through all of the standard tool changing macros. So that means if you don't have any, but it needs some, you need to set them up. If not, um, you should be good to go with simplicity. And it will also follow any heat ups. Um, so the first thing that it's gonna do is gonna calibrate the camera's rotation. So if it commands a move in X, but it actually moves in the Y in the camera frame, it'll rotate the camera to make it fit. Next, it will ca calculate the pixel accuracy. So if it moves 10 millimeters and it moves 10 pixels, the, in the image, it will have an accuracy of one millimeter per pixel. Um, my C270 has an accuracy of 0 0.025 millimeters per pixel, which means that that's the most accurate any sort of compensation and calibration can get. So now that it calibrated the first one, it's following through all of the macros to switch from the first tool to the second one. And it will just continue to go through and calibrate. And there we go, there is the second tool. So as you can see, it clearly shows the um, center point here in the image, and it will give you the coordinates that it's going as well as count exactly how many moves it takes to get there. We try to get it down uh, to as few moves as possible. Um, before all of the upgrades that came through, um, we were at, I don't know, probably 30 or 40, but now it's pretty quick and pretty simple. So, and now it'll do the third and last tool. I do not have the fourth tool set up currently. Um, I'm only on a 3HC. I need to swap over to tool boards eventually, again. Once again, it'll go through. It found it uh, with the red circle and the green indicator. Um, it will tell you if there's too many circles or if it can't find the nozzle, in which case you'll need to clean it. But otherwise, um, since I pre-run this and, and made sure that it works consistently, um, to show you, um, everything should be good to go. But there we go, went parked the last tool, and now it will give us a couple outputs. It's a bit less classy than screen recording, but it is what it is. So uh, the rough gist is that it spit out the offsets here for you to copy into your config or wherever you choose to store them. It's already reported out um, and applied it to your printer, so you should be good to go and start printing. And it also tells you your, um, 
your pixel accuracy. So again, um, at 0 0.0249 Ooh. Um, for the different uh, uh, tools, um, it can change between them based on how far away the tool is relative to the camera. So if you have, you know, if it's like 10 meters away, the object may only take up one pixel total or something like that. And you won't be able to tell the difference. Or if it's very close, like in a microscope, um, you know, and you have the difference in, in height and settings, uh, it, it may make a difference. But mine are all Z calibrated as well. So they should all be the same pixel since the nozzle is at the same location in space. And the last thing is, um, it gives you a little feedback on where that uh, capture point is. So the next time you run it, and your camera's in the same location, like mine is on my servo, um, you should just be able to type that in and not have to find it at all. There you go, it's a calibrated tool, calibrated machine. It was pretty simple. It took real time, what, uh, two minutes? Yep, took real time two minutes to get it all calibrated and, and away we go. It's, you know, it's not, not that big a deal. Um, once it's all set up and running. This is an awesome improvement. It really makes my life very simple and I'm excited to see what we can do and how fast we can make it and how reliable we can make it. Um, the prints I've been getting are, are pretty good with it so far. Um, and it's uh, it's been a massive time saver as I work on my tool designs as well as play with some different things as well. There's a lot of work going on in the background to make sure that um, this becomes faster and better and more reliable overall and gives you the data that you need in order to fix it like a uh, x-ray vision that tells you exactly what the vision algorithm is seeing so you can you know adjust your lighting or clean your nozzle in a way that makes it so that it's detectable every time um, a lot of great work going on and I'm, I'm really excited to have this as an option on the stable bot and it'll be the default option for any tool changer models so. here's a comparison between a well-aligned tool and a not so well-aligned tool so first we have a portion of this sitting cat here. So on first glance, it doesn't appear to be that bad, but when looking at the details and suddenly underneath, you can see that there are gaps in the extrusion because of the misaligned tools. You can see right through them. On the contrary here, we have this nice Maui, which is nice and aligned, sharp edges, and it, it looks beautiful. Um, this was done after a TAMP e run. So again, no human interaction, no test prints, it's just align and go simple. Well, that's TAMV in a nutshell. It's honestly a pretty simple and accessible program and that's kind of the, the beauty of the open source spirit, right? You know, big credit to Denal uh, for starting this off and I'm, you know, really disappointed that due to his untimely passing won't be able to work with him you know, anymore. But, you know, moving forward there's a lot of work done by uh, Haytham B or H2B on the Jubilee Discord as well as many others who have all contributed to get this going. It's really exciting being a part of an open source community and, and getting it all done. To, to that effect, this machine here is actually open source. I have a link down below in the comments for this particular machine. Um, I hope to launch it as Kickstarter in the next month or two um, to be a, you know, a, a scalable any size tool changer that people at home can build or um, I'll be offering it for either kit form or fully assembled uh, machine as well. So. Um, stay tuned. Automatic tool alignment is one of those things that I think will really take tool change to that next level of usability and reliability in terms of making sure that every time you swap around a tool for whatever job you need done as a consumer, um, you can you can get it done and it will not really affect your workflow very much instead of the current very tedious methods going forward. I hope that this video really helped out anybody who's looking to install TAMV on their own tool changer, whether it's a E3D TC or um, a Jubilee, for instance, or any, you know any variants uh, thereof, or you know wh whatever, man. Like, it's it's open source. Uh, we do this to share, and I'm I'm really happy to be here and, and sharing it with all of you. So. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask down below or join the Jubilee Discord. Link in the description um, as well for uh, you know any any advice or questions you may have. Um, we we love to have them and we love to keep improving this to, to make it better for everybody. So um, appreciate it and have a good day. Hasta bye bye.